ruled on Monday that federal employment laws protecting LGBTQ workers from discrimination delivers a major victory to the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender community uh, over con- amid concerns of an, over an erosion of their rights in recent years. That should have read federal employment laws do protect LGBTQ workers from discrimination. In a landmark 6-3 to three decision, the conservative-controlled court ruled that an employer who fires an individual merely for being gay or transgender violates the Civil Rights Act. Conservative Chief Justice John Roberts and fellow conservative Neil Gorsuch, who was appointed to the bench by President Donald Trump, joined the majority opinion. President Trump's other appointee, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, led three conservative justices in dissenting. They argued the issue should be settled through legislation. The family of a black man who was shot and killed by police in the southern city of Atlanta called Monday for drastic change in policing after the shooting at a fast food restaurant last Friday. The death of 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks is the latest shooting that has raised questions about the use of police force on African-American men and sparked nationwide protests. Ciara Brooks, a cousin of Rayshard Brooks, said at a family news conference in Atlanta on Monday, we're tired, we're frustrated, most importantly, we're heartbroken, so we need justice for Rayshard Brooks. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms announced police, announced police reforms on Monday. She included a requirement that officers de-escalate situations and also intervene if they see other officers using excessive force. The Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office has ruled Brooks's death a homicide. An autopsy found he was shot twice in the back. VOA News. Doctors Without Borders has withdrawn from a hospital in Kabul, Afghanistan, a month after unknown gunmen raided the facility's maternity ward and killed 16 women. Doctors Without Borders, also known by its French acronym MSF, announced the decision on Monday. No one has taken responsibility for the assault May 12th on the hospital in the Afghan capital, and there's been no information released about the perpetrators or a possible motive. A resurgence of COVID-19 infections in Beijing has ended the capital city's two-month-long virus-free period and threatened to cloud China's self-proclaimed success in combating the pandemic. A week earlier, China released a 37,000-word white paper chronicling its months-long fight against the coronavirus and heralding its success in containing COVID-19. As of Sunday, the number of confirmed cases in Beijing had surged to 79. Countrywide, China totaled 177 confirmed cases on Sunday after having accumulated more than 83,000 patients in the last six months. Officials said Monday the city's government has taken aggressive measures to stem the latest wave of outbreaks, including expansive testing, contract tracing, and quarantining, as well as a lockdown of 21 residential compounds. Since Saturday, Beijing has been closed to tourists. The United Nations said Monday that for the fifth consecutive year, Afghanistan was the deadliest country on the planet for children. In its annual report, the UN Security General, uh, Secure, Secretary General reported that more than 3,000 Afghan children were killed in 2019 and nearly as many were injured. More than 1,200 casualties were attributed to the Taliban. Afghan national forces were believed re- responsible for about 1,000. In Yemen, the world's largest humanitarian crisis, more than 1,400 children were killed or injured. There were also at least 20 attacks on schools. The report attributed 313 of the casualties to Houthi rebels, 222 to the Saudi Arabian-led coalition. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration on Monday revoked the emergency use authorization for a malaria drug promoted by U.S. President Donald Trump as a treatment for COVID-19. The FDA said there's growing evidence that hydroxychloroquine, along with chloroquine, are not likely to be effective in treating the coronavirus and could cause deadly side effects. The agency said the drug's unproven benefits, in its words, do not outweigh the known and potential risks. The move means federal supplies of the drug will no longer be distributed to state and local health officials to use against the coronavirus. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton, and you're listening to VOA News. 